we are working in spreadsheets so we're going to look at microsoft excel and we're going to look at the new x lookup function so this is a new function that microsoft has included in microsoft office 365 only at this point of this video so if you've got microsoft office 365 you can make use of this advanced lookup option so the x lookup function was a way was designed as a way to improve on the current v and h lookup that's currently available in excel um, so before we get into an x lookup let's just remind ourselves how a v lookup works and that'll make life a little bit easier when we try to explain the x lookup so the v lookup over here so we've got a value 365 and or 356 right and we want to look up those sales in this table over here so if I said equals V lookup, it's a vertical lookup. And we're going to look up that 356. And where are we looking for it? We're looking for it in this table. And we want to get the PRC, the person in charge. So I'm going to select the whole table. And then we're going to say, which column do we want to get it from? We want to get from this is column one, column two, column three. So we want to get the third column's value. And then if we wanted the value to be exact, then we would have the range lookup option set to an exact match. But by default, it's set to appropriate or approximate match. So that's set to true. So I'm going to make it approximate because I, there is no sales that is three, five, six exactly. So we want it to be true. Okay, so that's what by default it would be true. So you could leave it out. So that's how a V lookup works. So I would go over here. It would find three, five, six. It goes, it's above that. No, that's too much. It'll jump back here, move across to Faye, and that's how it would work. So by default, you'll first of all notice by default, it does a, it looks for within a range or the closest value below it. It doesn't find an exact match, and that's important. So the VLOOKUP by default doesn't look for an exact match. You must specify if it's an exact match. Okay, so... That's how a VLOOKUP works. Now, the problem with a VLOOKUP is that you always could only look in the left-hand column and move to the right. You can never look in the right side and move backwards or look over here and then have another block of options down here. So that made it quite complicated. So they've developed the XLOOKUP, which is a little bit more powerful and has a lot more options. So let's look at what is in an X lookup. An X lookup has a lot more parameters. So yeah, I've got a list of them. So there's six parameters in total. But what's nice is those first three are the only compulsory ones. So if you leave out all these others, then that's okay. So you can just use the first three and ignore those last ones if you want to. But those last three give us a lot of options. So let's have a look. First of all, we're going to look up the value. So just like in the V lookup, we looked up that 356 value. That lookup value is exactly the same in an X lookup. Then, now here's the difference. We don't have a table that we refer to. You're just going to have a range of cells. So the second parameter is where are the cells that you're looking up, the 356. In this case, it would be column A four to a seven so you would just refer to the range of cells that you're looking for that lookup value in that's the only thing that you're doing you're not saying the whole table and then the third parameter is the return array in other words where is the range of cells that is going to return the result from so if you would then select just this column c from c4 to c7 so by doing that, you don't need to select the whole table. You just say, look in this range for that value. And if you find a match, go to the corresponding value in this return range or array. So those are the only three parameters that you need. Now, these next three are not compulsory, but they do provide some very nice features. The first one that comes after the third one, so number four, is a not found option. So this is what will be displayed if you do not find the value that you're looking for so that's almost like an error check and if you don't have it it normally puts like a, a not applicable an na error but this way you can specify the type of message that it displayed if we do not find it so that's a lot more powerful than the previous x look uh, v lookup and h lookup and then the fifth parameter is what type of match mode are you looking for now do you remember i said by the v lookup we had to specify if it was an exact uh, exact match it was by default just found the most appro approximate match but in an x lookup the default is an exact match so if you do not put in anything into that parameter 5 it would find it would have to find that 356 exactly for it to find a match 
Or, and this is the beauty of it, it provides different options. We can find the exact or smallest match. In other words, it would go default down or exact or biggest or in default to the biggest one above it, which it provides a lot more opportunity. And then there's a wildcard. I'll show a couple of examples of if we're using a wildcard match. Okay, that means part of the word is, is found. And then the last but not least is the, the mode, the search mode. Now you can search from the top of the list or from the bottom of the list up, or you can do use the binary search in ascending order or descending order. For those of you who know about binary searches, you can use those options. So those are viable options if you want to start looking from the bottom up or from the top down. So those are options that are available to you. So let's do a couple of examples to see how this X lookup works. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to try to replicate this example of the V lookup using an X lookup. So the X lookup, so we're going to say equals X lookup. Now remember, lookup, spell it right, Mr. Long. Lookup. So it tells you all these parameters that you've got. So you've got all the options available. So what are we looking for? We're looking for this 356 value. So I'm going to click on that. Comma, where are we looking for? And so instead of selecting an array, uh, I mean a whole table, we're just going to select the column that we're looking for, this 356. We're just looking for it over here in that range, in the A4 to A7 option. And then my next option is where are we going to return? What, what, are, what are we going to return from the result from what? We want the person in charge. So I don't need to select everything. I just need to select the corresponding values that are opposite that 47 in this case it's the c47 so that could be over here it could be down here it doesn't matter so we've got a lot more versatile options here so it doesn't have to always be in a table so we're going to look for that f8 which is this block behind this formula here look for it in here and when we find a match we're going to go to the corresponding value in the c column and get the person in charge now i'm just going to put those three in and we're going to see if we get the same result and we get a not applicable. Same as long as it doesn't work. Remember, I said the, the V lookup, it finds an approximate match. And the X lookup, by default, finds an exact match. So first of all, do you see what the error looks like? So I'm going to look at this not found option. So my fourth parameter is going to be the parameter that we display if it's not found. Now, I can make text go uh, not there. You can type whatever you want. Maybe I don't want that NA there. So if it doesn't find it, in this case, we can see what it's going to look like. So in this case, we know that the 356 three, isn't there because it's not exactly there. It's not looking for within the range. And there you can see it's displaying the not sure option because it didn't find it. You could also just, if you don't want to put that in, you can also just do that. So there's no option to put in. If you do that, it'll default to the NA. If you don't want to put in a value for the not found, but you want to put something in for the fifth parameter. So you can do that. I'm going to leave that not sure in there because I like my own error messages. So let's move to the fifth parameter. Now we said that in a V lookup, it finds an approximate match and we've got to specify if it's an exact match where with the X lookup, the default is an exact match. So over here, where we put the exact match, if I put a comma there, you'll see the options. It gives it to you. Now, if we want to display, so if we got three, five, six, and we want to go, okay, that's too much. Let's jump back there and get Faye. We would select a negative one, which is an exact match or smaller. So we're going to select that option there, a negative one. So it'll find it. If it goes too high, boom, it'll jump back to the first one and go to Faye. So if we put a negative one, it now gets the result of Faye, just like the V lookup. So that's basically the equivalent to a V lookup that we just did there. But there might be a situation where I don't want to drop down. I want to, if, it, if it's within that range, if it gets above that, I don't want Faye, I want to jump up to Lutando over here. In that case, we're not going to use a negative one. We're going to use the exact match or larger option. And there we go. Is Lutando, it jumps up to Lutando's option because it moves up an option. Okay, and we'll do an example now about the wildcard. Now, the wildcard we'll use when we get over here to the text over here. So we'll come back to that. And then the search mode is just, you can say options over here. You can say, if I, hey, we want to go from first to last or from last to first. So it gives you those options and you can see the different results that happen. Okay, so those are options available. But most of the time, that's all you're going to need. You need to say what will happen if it's not displayed and how you are searching for it. What type of mode are we going to find that match? Those are predominantly your options. So let's try a couple more examples. Let's take this one. We're looking at this table now. We want to find the code 
and then we want to move across to the department okay so let's try that quickly equals an x lookup and we are looking for that value 3 inside of that range and then if we find it we want to look up the department which would be that range and it's going to be an exact match so I don't mind having any other parameters like I'm not going to worry about if it's not found and I can just leave it like that so it jumps to 3 and finds food there we go now what happens if we've got the department and we want to find the location Do you see we're moving backwards so I'm going to say equals x lookup we are looking up the department value and we're looking for it in this C column C 11 to 15 and we want to find the corresponding result from the B 11 to 15 option so we are moving backwards okay so there we go it goes to outdoor and finds PEB which is short for Port Elizabeth okay so that's how it goes backwards now what happens if I type in the word out I want to find any option out so now I did not find that I didn't find the word out because it's it, it needs to find an exact match now what happens if I say okay we don't want an error message so I'm gonna put nothing for the error message and I want exact match or smaller as that option okay so it comes to that one and finds out and goes smaller it doesn't find it goes all the way to Cape Town so it goes boom, smaller so it's between there so that's not exactly what I want uh, what happens if I want to find out but it must be I, I can't remember if it's outdoor outdoors or whatever you're not too sure so you want a wildcard option so in the case we were trying to find like if it's part of the spelling we, we still want to find Port Elizabeth but we just don't know how the spelling is going to work when we got part, partial parts of the word that's when we're going to use the wildcard option we can use a star so if I come here first of all let's let's use the wildcard match which means it finds anything but it also includes wildcards wildcards if you remember correctly are stars and, and I think uh, question marks so a star means any value that you type in so that replaces anything that like any any options so I'll use that as an example we're going to put a two over here you see it doesn't find the result that we're looking for but if we type over here so we've got the two so it's looking for wild cards if I say out star in other words that star represents it could be anything after that it starts with the word out but we don't know what the rest of it is now it's doing a wild card match so it looks for that wild card it looks for anything that has out and anything after it that's got out and something after it we find a match if you don't want the user to type that in what you could do is you could incorporate that into your formula by saying we want to refer to look up that value and using our string handling we can say and just put a star at the end of it so whatever they type in put a star at the end of it so that way we can use our wild card match and there we go it works so wild card if you use stars then it would find anything within that where that star represents nothing or anything so out with something after it do we find out with something after it there it is move to the PEB okay so that's the wild card so that is an X lookup quite a nice little feature as I said as of time of this video it's only available in office 365 um, but if you do have access to it give it a try it's very powerful for more videos on Excel, go to our YouTube channel. Please click on that subscribe button. We'd love to hear from you, so leave a comment. Follow us on Facebook or Twitter. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.